had a lot of people ask me, you know, over the last little while, how do you take the timing belt off? Because you got the tensioner here, it's not easy to just loosen something and take the tension out like on a lot of them. Um, first thing you want to do is you want to take your crank pulley, uh, put it back on, or if you have the tool, use the tool. Uh, but you got a timing mark here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here, a little bit everywhere. So what you want to do is you want to focus on these ones out on the cams. If you have dual overhead cam, it doesn't matter. It's the same layout, same thing. Uh, so you want to get these up to here. So go ahead and rotate it around clockwise. And you see this timing mark is lined up on the crank, but these are off 180. That's because this turns twice for every two times these guys go around. So we go around here. This is part of being a four-stroke engine. You know, you got four strokes per process, you know. So we come back around. Get you a crank, get it up there, uh, line up your cams, I'm looking at those, those look good. Alright, so we pull this out of the way, so the next thing that you want to do is you want to get a 14 millimeter socket, impact or with a wrench or whatever, doesn't matter. Now which of these pulleys do you think has the least amount of tension on it? This has a ton, this has a tight wrap, these are all tight, these have ba you know, barriers. Um, the best thing to do is to pull this one off first. You can see that's just a short arc. That loosens up the belt just a little bit. So pull that one off and it does have a little bit of a ledge to it. So just be mindful of that. I rotate it up and out. So now we got a little slack. Well that's good. That's not enough, but that's good. So the next one we want to do is we pull this one out. Once it's out, you got a lot of slack. Looks like you could take the belt off easy. Now it seems like the passenger side, um, the right hand side of the vehicle, it's always got a bunch of, you know, play or whatever. This one's a mouse trap. This one's spring loaded. So be a little bit careful with that. Uh, you can get your 14 millimeter, or uh, 17, excuse me. And uh, maybe rotate that. The closer you have that to the mark without going past, the more stable that's going to be. So we're going to hold on to the wheel here um, and I'm going to support reverse brace with my knee. I'm going to get that right on the money and then pull the belt off. Now you wouldn't have to take the tensioner off if it had a pin in it, but in this case <coughs> we don't have a pin in it. So we've got to pull that off so that we can compress it. There may be methods or means for compressing that while it's in here. I have no idea what they are. Um, so this is coming out. Same thing, 14 millimeter. That's how you take your belt off. And I'll take you over to the vise and I'll show you how to compress this in the vise. Um, you have to do this correctly and then you can reuse it. Otherwise, you're going to be spending a couple hundred bucks on a new one. So let's go to the vise. Okay, so what we do is we go to put it in the vise. Get your vise opened up nice and wide. Um, look at the holes right off the bat. What am I going to have to do to get this pin in there? When this is in the car, these are questions you got to ask yourself. When I get this in the car, how am I going to get the pin back out? If you put the pin in this way and you go to bolt it in, guess what? There's a pin in the way. Dang it! So you're going to have to pull it out and just put it in the vise. After you put it in the vise, then pull it out and then put it in the other side. But just put it in the right side to begin with, huh? It's easier. So what we got to do is we put it in the vise and start to turn it down. We want to make sure that our holes line up. So I'm going to take my little key here. If you don't have a key, that's okay. You can use a drill bit. Just get your drill bits out. Pick one that's about the right diameter. Like you could use that little gold one there if you had to. Drill bits are great. They don't want to bend. They'll snap before they bend, just like this. It's, uh, you know, it's just the right tool, steel for the job. I'm looking at my pulley. It looks like I can clear my pulley, no problem. I'm turning it a little bit. So as I collapse this, it's not going to have anything else get in the way. Watch how slowly, I'm going to do this in real time, it's going to take forever. And skip to the end if you've got it, but maybe you want to see about how long it takes. It's about time I put out a video about this. So this thing's going around about as slow as the second hand on a clock. I mean just be thinking of that, and I'm not pushing real hard. You know I can push that with my pinky, it takes a little torque. Um, but if I'm cranking on it and doing this, I'm going to ruin it. It's just going to totally bugger it up and it's not going to be reusable. You're going to have to replace it. If you do try to use it and you did it too fast, you're going to have problems. Your belt's going to come loose and you may lose your motor. You may smack some valves, you know what I mean? So, just take your time. 
Let's check on it every now and then. And what's going to happen is this is going to go in here and uh, go through to the back side. When you stick this through, you don't want it to stick out too far. You don't want, you know, like half inch or three quarters of an inch sticking out. All you need is just a little bit, like I'd probably say three millimeters, four at max. So we're just kind of cruising along. This doesn't take forever, um, but this is a good time to take your time. You know, if you rush this, it's going to cost you a lot, lot more time later. So in essence, it pays to be patient. You know, it's faster to be patient. A lot of things in life that are kind of backwards like that, like we're going slow is going to be faster overall. So we'll check that. Looks like it dropped through just fine. So I'm going to support that with my finger from the back side. See how I'm bouncing up and down from the back side? I'm going to open that slowly. And as I open it, it just pops right out. So there you go. Now this is the official Subaru pin. I probably should have used a drill bit just to show you. But see how that's got to be able to clear? And you can move it in a little bit. You can move it out a little bit. Obviously you're going to be able to yank this out eventually anyway. So we can take this now and we can go right back to the engine and put it back on. Now here's the deal, this is an important thing to know. This little piece here is replaceable. It just bolts on with these two bolts and this thread, of, or three bolts. Should we yank it off and just show it to you? I don't see any harm in that really. So you get a 12 millimeter socket. If you strip this out or mess it up, you didn't ruin your engine block. Don't worry about it. You pay 65 bucks or 85 bucks or whatever and get a new one. See, that comes off. And this is what this bolts into. So if you strip that out, you're going to be okay. Don't worry about it. I forgive you, um, but that's it right there. But be careful, you know what I mean? You'll know, get so many people that try to take this off. You know, you saw the way that we done, undid everything. If you pull this out, because you didn't know that, you're going to strip that out because this hydraulic tensioner isn't going to be for having that, you know what I mean? All right, here you go. You really should not start this by implement a tool and like, get the bolts. Come on, dude. You're instructing people. Do it right. Don't be trying to take shortcuts. It's so tempting. Don't do it. Everything's aluminum here. You're putting steel bolts into an aluminum uh, engine block. These you definitely don't want to cross thread or mess up because if you do that, then you are into the engine block and you'll have to weld it and retap it and all that kind of stuff, assuming that you have the implements. And nothing's going to be able to be welded until you get it just sterile clean by drilling it out more. It's a big pain in the butt. So make sure you do it right. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh, feels good. So we'll get rid of this little uh, implement here and we'll torque these down by hand. You'll feel that they'll go, 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 and then it's just like you hit a wall. Just, you, know, you hit a lot of little walls on the way there, actually. But All right, so we got that in there tight. We'll take our tensioner. We're going to be ripping the heads off of this thing and just going nuts on this here in a minute. So it's got that little uh, steel part that's pressed in there. Push against, and you can see that the aluminum gets thicker to be able to handle that. This tensioner, it's a tough little sucker. I mean, it's stout. We're not going to be replacing the oil pump or any of that kind of stuff, so we don't have to have this off. So we're just going to stick it back on, that way it'll be there when we need it. There we go. Get rid of that thing. You can hammer that in there tight, but it's better to just do it right this way. I grab my ratchet under here and I lean on it this way. You know, I'm not, Rawr! you know, I found that that's a good method to get the right torque. So. Rock and roll, just kind of do things to, you know, limit your leverage so you, know, you don't overdo it. We're also, we already did the water pump here, you know, a while ago, so we don't have to do that on this. You know the drill. Click like, click subscribe, leave comment. Thanks.